Hello students, we've been talking about average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change, and this particular example deals with instantaneous rate of change. So we're given a table that shows the daily receipts in millions of dollars of the movie Avatar for successive Fridays after its opening on Friday the 18th of December 2009. We are asked to estimate the instantaneous rate of change of daily receipts 25 weeks after opening day. Round our answer to four decimal places. Where do we begin? Well, instantaneous rate of change is very different than average rate of change. Average rate of change is the slope of a secant line, whereas instantaneous rate of change we're thinking of as the slope of the tangent line. And we're just getting started talking about tangent lines. We don't know how to find the slope of a line that has a single point. Instead, we have to use our secant lines and get an estimate based on those secant lines what the slope of our tangent line is going to be. So this one takes a little bit of in-depth work. I'm going to narrow in on 25 weeks and find that in the table. So right here is 25 weeks. And I'm going to take points that are pretty close to 25. So I'm actually going to focus right here on these points right here. And I am going to calculate the slope of the secant line from the point 25 comma 0 0.064. I'm going to take that as my initial point and then find the slope of the secant line to when the weeks is 16, when the weeks is 19, when the weeks is 22, and when the weeks is 28. And I'm going to get these estimates, okay? Those will all be average rates of change. And what I'm doing is looking for a pattern. I'm looking for a limiting sequence. We then will take the first average rate of change, and that's going to be the average rate of change between the point 25, 0, 0 0.064, and the point where the number of weeks is 16 with its corresponding y value of 0 0.844. And if we calculate the average rate of change in daily receipts for that particular, that particular set of points, we get a slope of approximately negative 0.086 repeating. Then let's look at the slope of the tangent line that passes through the two points, first where the weeks are 25 and the weeks are 19. When we calculate that slope out for the secant line through those two points, we get a slope of approximately negative 0.09483. Let's continue. Let's look at weeks 25 and 22 and calculate the slope of the line through those two points. And when we calculate the slope of the line through those two points, or in other words, the slope of that secant line, we get negative 0.04133. And finally, let's look at weeks 28 and 25. When we calculate the slope of the line through those two points, those two data points, we get negative 0.012. But what's a little disturbing here is there is no real pattern that's developing. There doesn't seem to be any kind of number that these slopes are leaning towards. They, there doesn't seem to be any particular pattern or any kind of limit going on. To get the instantaneous rate of change then, we want to choose the points that are closest to 25 and take a look at those specifically. That is, because there's not a pattern to these slopes that I can follow and estimate my instantaneous rate of change from, I'm going to look at the two points that are closest. Specifically, I want to look at the points that have to deal with the weeks 22 and 28. So I want to look at the slope of the secant lines that pass through the weeks of 22 and 28. So these two numbers here are the ones I want to look at. And because there's not a specific pattern there, and I, I see that 25 lies in between 22 and 28, actually evenly in between those two, I want to calculate an average of these average rates of change, if that's, if that's kind of a double play on average right there, but I'm going to average these two rates, average rates of change together, now I'm getting tongue-tied, and that average is what I'm going to use as my instantaneous rate of change. 
Our last step then is to average these average rates of change. And the way we do that is we take the two rates of change, we're going to add them up and divide by two. In other words, take their average. That is, I'm going to take negative 0.04133, repeating, so we'll just go 41333, let's go a couple decimals, and add to it negative 0.012, and we're going to divide that by 2. So averaging those average rates of change gives us approximately negative 0.02666, repeating, rounding to four decimal places, we get approximately negative 0.02. 267. This is our approximate instantaneous rate of change of daily receipts 25 weeks after opening day. Good luck. If you have any questions, just let me know.